Hello everybody and welcome to Starting Small Music. I'm Justin McCormick and you're about to hear a conversation with an artist, musician, and music industry professional on their journey and how they got to where they are today. At Starting Small, we like to take you on a journey uncovering the untold stories of your favorite songs and artists. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Just keep a smile on your face and it be okay. Try not to be bitter, you gotta do it either way. So when life throws a jab, you gotta duck out of the way. Big hey, Memphis songwriter Brock Berry here with us. How you doing today, Brock? Good, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So getting right into your story, where did you grow up and what was your childhood like? I grew up in a town called uh, Winter Springs, Florida. Um, and yeah, I was, I was just always into music since I was about 12 years old. Started playing guitar, started playing drums. And um, was in, you know, band all through high school, marching band, and just was always, honestly, got into, like, classic rock as a kid. Yeah. Who are some of the first bands you remember listening to and kind of resonating with their sound? I mean, my, I mean, again, being a big classic rock, like, uh, family, I mean, anything from, like, you know, Queen to Led Zeppelin, and kind of as I, my dad was also a big fan of, like, you know, Hank Williams and Garth and, I mean, any, any of the outlaw old school country. And uh, I was honestly always a metalhead. So I was always like into Metallica and Deftones and, and Incubus, pretty much just any, any music that had like kind of high emotion or angst, honestly. For sure. Now, did you grow up in a musical family at all? Or is music something that kind of you came to yourself? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, that was probably the most, uh, I mean, my mom sang, but uh, my... It's interesting because my cousin's actually one of the founding members of Shenandoah, um, mm-hmm. which is which. I, but I never met him until I moved to Nashville or or got connected with him. But in my in my like immediate family, I'm I'm the only mus- musical person. Now, what age did you uh, pick up your first instrument? <clears throat> About twelve, thirteen. And uh, was it guitar? Yeah, my dad had an old Hondo guitar, and uh, I started playing that. Eventually, got like a old school uh squire strat and uh then i started playing drums about a year later and just kind of kept picking up instruments from there now being a metalhead did you kind of start forming bands with some buddies in high school playing out uh what did that look like yeah i mean that was the whole you know we practiced in my bedroom and garage and i played in bands i mean pretty much from from 13 to 23 until i got into production pretty much full-time and writing uh what's your favorite band name from that high school era of uh metal bands Do you rem- remember any of them uh the the one the the most metal one would have been mind scar which we were kind of like a death metal band honestly <laughs> now were you writing original material for this band are you guys doing covers yeah it was it was all original stuff so did you start writing pretty much right when you picked up your guitar or when did you kind of start writing songs yeah, I think, I mean, you start writing riffs and stuff when you just play guitar, but I mean, like, writing probably really kicked in for me around, like, 15, 16, songs-wise. Gotcha. Now, uh, senior year of high school, kind of, what's your thought process like? Are you thinking about going to college? Are you wanting to jump into music full-time to pursue it? What'd that look like? I mean, high school was, <clears throat> again, I was in choir and jazz band and all that stuff, and I couldn't get enough music personally, so I was... um I was in a band and then I started another band called hand to hand, which ended up getting a record deal and ended up touring Europe and all that stuff. And, uh, and so basically I got out of high school and just literally skipped college and went to touring. So. Heck yeah. What do you remember about those early days on the road? Uh, Anything you learned specifically? Yeah. I mean, the main thing was like, I mean, I was 19 and our first tour was like 45 days in Europe. I had never been on tour before. So that was a total eye opener to never having been on tour. Um, so we're in a sprinter, you know, van and with a trailer and, and, and I was just like, man, this is cool, but it was never for, as a songwriter and producer, it was never enough music for me back then because you couldn't like, really record on the road you can only write on like a a guitar right so is it coming out of that band that you make the decision to move to nashville uh kind of what's that process like 
So from there, I, I did that. I ended up working. Um, so I tore, I worked with that band from 17 till probably my early 20s. And uh, I started working with a producer who produced our last record, James Paul Wisner, who had worked with da the original Dashboard Confessional, Under Oath, um, and, and a whole slew of amazing artists. So I was working with him as an engineer, and I started my own studio in 2007. And so I pretty much spent 10 years down in Orlando producing at that in that little run where we worked with like 21 Pilots, uh, a rocket to the moon, Matt Hires versus Emerge, a lot of a lot of singer songwriter slash rock bands, you know, indie rock bands. And during that time, about twelve years ago, I started coming to Nashville uh, back and forth, like every other month for a week. That's awesome. What is that? Uh, uh, do you have any memories working with Twenty One Pilots? I feel like they have to have such a cool, like, creative process in the studio. Yeah, I mean, it was it was one of those things where you know they had a song that they needed to do for a deluxe. And uh, they were on tour and they came in and, and sweetest guys ever. I mean, obviously crazy talented, both of them. Um, but it, it, their, you know, t their process is so cool where, you know, he makes most of that stuff himself and kind of like transferring it over to like, I can't remember what program he used and, and then letting us be creative to kind of expand on his ideas and, um, Man, but it, it was it was really cool watching how they work because it's so it's so different than how normal bands would work. For sure. Now you first make it to Nashville. Are you still making more pop rock kind of music or do you fall into country right when you get to town? No, I mean, <clears throat> when I came to Nashville, I pretty much had decided that I was going to, you know, be kind of like 80, 20, like 80 percent country and kind of chase down what you know, what, what I was kind of chasing after here was kind of be, you know, rock was, you know, still, still, I know it's rocky again right now, but, but 10 years ago, it was still like, you had FGL and Keith Urban, and it was still rocky. So I kind of felt like I fit in here more than like LA or Nashville, or I'm sorry, LA or New York, because I was also writing in those cities as well. For sure. Now, what did those first kind of months look like networking for you, like moving to Nashville, kind of meeting your core group of first people to write with? So the two years prior, I had a core group of writers um, that I was writing with that would write with me. Um, and it, honestly, at that point, basic more off the, of my um, production stuff um, than anything. Uh, so I kind of like basically was working with them. And when, so when I was coming to town every other month, I could... Um, you know, I would have someone to write with and, you know, and they could kind of expand my circle a little bit just to kind of get a feel for the town and make sure it was the right thing too. For sure. Who would you say are like people that uh, would be in your class, people that moved to town around the same time that you feel like you guys kind of came up around the same time? Um, I mean, trying to think like, I mean, I was a lot of the guys that I, I that I first met, had, we're already a little bit more established and uh which was really cool um you know josh dunn who was one of my first friends in town we ended up writing um what happens in a small town together which was um his first hit and my my second hit so that was pretty cool having like an og you know writer buddy that i that i worked with having a hit with him was really special for sure that's one of my favorites that you've written uh What's the story behind that? Take me through the day, uh, kind of the writing process of that one. So that one, um, we were, I had just, I had been working with Brantley Gilbert um, through my manager, Alicia Pruitt. And, um, well, she's my manager now. She wasn't back then. She worked at Warner Chapel back then. And I started sending tracks to him in Georgia. He started writing to with them. And so we built this friendship and whatnot. And he was going on the road and he had called me it was like, hey, um, I need to come put a vocal on this song. And so he comes, he comes over. I'm already on my way home. He comes over, puts the vocal on the song. And uh he's like, Yeah, I'm going going out on the road this weekend with with Red Red Akins and to write try to write a single. And I was like, Well, do you have a you know track guy, producer, writer with you that can and he's like, No, he's like, You want to come? So I did. And me and Josh had had started that song, the verse chorus um 
together and you know Brantley on the way had called me I'm sitting in the parking lot waiting for the bus and he's like hey um I've never done a female duet so if you have anything teed up we can work on it and uh we we knew it was special when we wrote it it's just you know a lot of things with songs is timing you just don't know when the right time is going to be in the right artist so we wrote this song called new money on his last record we thought it was really like the what they were looking for tempo rocking um and Scott Borchetta was he he loved it but he's like I don't think that's the first single so we ended up I ended up pulling up that verse chorus I had we ended up going through it changing stuff Brantley doing his thing making it him and he, he was on tour with Wheeler Walker and Kid Rock so we were up in like Saratoga Springs New York and uh we ended up um getting one of Kid Rock's background singers to come sing the female part and sent it over to Scott and he flipped out and loved it. And they spent the next couple months figuring out, uh, you know, who was going to be on it. Lindsay L jumped on it. And uh, yeah, I guess about, you know, eight months later, it was, it was number one song. That's so dope. Now uh, another one of my favorites is yours. It's homesick. And uh, I remember seeing Kane do that song on an early tour before it was even a single and it just standing out in the set kind of take me through uh, the writing process of that one as well. Man, that was one of those, like, it was me and Matt McGinn and Taylor Phillips and Kane on a bus run. Um, we wrote a bunch of songs that weekend. Nothing was really clicking. And then, uh, as you might know, like on Kane's knuckles, like he has the words homesick tattooed on. Yeah. Um, and so Taylor was like, he said, buddy, because they're best friends. He's like, if they're, if, if those words are tattooed in your hand, they kind of deserve a song. And uh, we started it late that night. This is the last night. Uh, it was So that must have been like a Saturday um and we kind of got it going got the vibe and everything and man we ended up it was one of those nights where we ended up getting back on the bus don't even get back and going till like two in the morning and we literally finished we're driving back to Nashville from wherever we are during this whole process we probably left at like 10 or 11 that night on the bus and uh <laughs> we roll into into Nashville and pull in like Everyone had just gone to sleep like 20 minutes before. I'm like literally there packing up all my gear. For, and uh, we uh, <laughs> we literally we get off the bus 15 minutes later and Kane calls me um, like, I don't know, five or six hours later. He's like, hey, I want to put this on Instagram. Um, can you get the demo done? And I was like out with my kids and I was like, yep, I'll just I'll go home and, and you'll have it tonight. And he posted it and kind of the rest is history. That's so dope. What is your relationship with Kane like? I mean, having like a few hits with him now, like uh, you feel like you're in like kind of his camp of guys that kind of he's like always looking for like songs now. Yeah, dude. I mean, he's he's one of the best, sweetest guys ever. I mean, he's been been so good to to me and and a lot of people. And um, you know, I'm I've been extremely grateful for him and his friendship. And it's one of those things where you know he. I mean, with artists, they have to try new things and be crazy and do their thing. But he, I've been, I've been very blessed for him to, to be a good friend to me. Now, do you have a favorite song that you feel like you're most proud of that uh, has been released? I mean, I, I, I mean, I think most songwriters always love, I mean, we all love hit songs and the way they make, we make us all feel. And I'm a sucker for life songs. So um, the I'll say the craziest one to me is probably my Kenny Chesney song just because I never imagined having a hit with Kenny Chesney and being a yeah. part of that thing like that. But, you know, the, the, the life songs I've had, all, I don't know, they kind of always mean the most homesick has a thing to it, which it just, it just feels so honest and real. It's hard to not love that song, but you know, with, with Brantley Gilbert, um, we've had hard days, which was a COVID song that will always mean a lot to me because it was such a personal song for all of us writers that had gone through some really rough stuff with a, with our spouses and family. Um, I would say that would probably be one of the other really special ones. For sure. Now, I like to close my interviews by asking, what's a piece of advice you'd give to the aspiring uh, songwriters and musicians out there? I think, uh, man, that's, that's such a, a, a loaded question and a long, a long question or answer. But uh, I think the main thing is, is to, you know, to enjoy the journey and to kind of find your crew and come up with them. You know, I never, if you're the best writer in the room, you probably need to, you know, try to find some different rooms and and, sh and mess it up, you know, mess it up, shake it up, whatever you want to say. And like, I don't know, just kind of like try to find your songs in the songs and don't try to 
be somebody else and uh and just always write what's real you know i think that's the biggest thing i i I see and i hear with songs is with up and coming writers is it feels like they're trying to write a song so it doesn't feel like anything and you know we write hundreds of songs a year and everybody only gets to hear a small amount of those but the main thing we're always chasing is a feeling we want to feel something which is what all the songs we love do no matter whether they're a hit or not doesn't matter but a song has to feel like a song hey guys thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this episode make sure to subscribe and leave a comment and check out my music on all streaming platforms at justin mccormick see you guys next time